Hi, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Well, it's finally done. I have completed the final uh, logo of my set of five. The Marine Corps was the last one that I had completed. And of course, I put the logo on the back with the keyhole slot. So I wanna show you how I did all of this today and how easy it is to switch from engraving to carving. Let's get started. I'm engraving the Marine Corps logo today, and I'm doing this at 70 inches per minute. And that seemed to be the best setting to get the best results versus the time. And this is the last of the set that I'm doing of all five branches. Now, if you watch the other videos, you know that this is the logo that I created from scratch using the letters from Easel and creating this whole project in the Easel software. And if you look close at the detail, this actually is turning out to be very, very sharp and crisp. Actually, it's better than what I really expected. The Marine Corps symbol in the center is actually a scaled down version of what I have done in the past. And the detail is still there. It looks absolutely fantastic. Here is the larger version of the logo that's currently hanging on the wall. And this logo is about twice the size as the one that I'm engraving now. The other thing that I want to point out is that this wood is laminated together. And if you look real close, you can see right where the joint is. But what I'm doing is using all the scraps that I possibly can since our state in Louisiana is under a stay in place order and we can't leave the house. Now that all of the engraving is done from the logos itself, it's time to go ahead and put the decorative edge on. And I'm just using a roundover a uh, bit to be able to do this. Now the best thing to be able to do is always do the end grain first. Once you have the end grain done, then you can do the other direction. That helps to prevent the tear out. I find it a lot easier to be able to put the edge on the project at the router table rather than trying to do a setup on the CNC machine. The only thing I'll need to do is just come back and sand the edge. This bit's starting to get a little dull. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put my logo on the backs of each of these um, military logos. And this, even though it looks big on the screen, is actually 2.26 inches wide and 0.88 inches high. So it's really a very small logo that I'm going to be putting on there. And I'm going to be doing fill only. I'm not doing the line as you can see over here. And I'm doing this at 70 inches per minute with 100% power. Now I do have this set at two passes and I think I'm going to leave that. Now what I did is I have my setting right here and this is inch and a quarter up from the bottom I think that will work fine because the logo will come down to about this point the next thing I have is the laser on at a very low power and what that allows me to do is slide this up and align it exactly where it needs to be okay here's the setup that I have I have two bump stops one on the left and on the right I have the third bump stop on the back side and that allows me to just slide the plaque in, stop it right at the bump stop and it will give perfect alignment. Okay, the first one's completed and I can just slide this out and we'll put the next one in. Now that just slides right back in. It slides all the way up to the bump stop. And that gives me perfect alignment and I'm ready to do the next one. There you go. Cannot get much easier than that. Having the bump stops 
set up this way makes it where you do not need to do the alignment each time. It's already set, ready to go. So there's the finished logo. I think that looks really, really good. Four more to go, and I'll have this phase done. One of the comments that I had received, they were saying there was a slight bit of movement of the laser when I connected it to the mount. And I want you to be able to take a look at the operation, and there is no movement at all. Now, in between the cars, if I grab hold to the laser and shift it or move it, yes, but I think that is just how the magnets were attached to it. And there's really no need to worry because it's not going to move during the engraving process, as you can see from this example. Now I want to do the side-by-side -side comparison. This logo was done at 70 inches a minute with one pass. And this logo was done at 70 inches a minute, but it had two passes. So you can take a look at these and see the difference just by doubling the pass. Now keep in mind that also doubles your time as well. The nice thing about this setup, now that I've got all of the laser engraving done, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to do the keyhole slot right here. Now the bump stop will stay in place. The only thing I'm going to need to do is be able to add some clamps to hold it down. Other than that, the setup's exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out the machine, put the bit in, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay, I opened a new window in Easel. I'm going to go over here to the apps and select the um, keyhole generator. Now then, on this, I only want one. I do want to be able to go with this on the vertical. The depth. I measured my bit. I don't want this at 0.28. Length of the cut will be one inch, and there's not going to be any spacing because I'm only doing one. So now I want to be able to import that in. And there it is, right here. Now the next thing that's very, very important to do is come over to the settings and you want the settings to be set up where we do this in one pass. So the depth of the cut is going to be 0.28. And that will take care of it. The other thing that I'm going to do because I want this set at my zero point for the center. So I'm going to select shape Put this at the zero point for the center here, and then I'm going to set this at zero. And zero. So I have my keyhole slot right here, and I'm going to set my bit for the center. Now I want to go over and just show you what this looks like. How that carves. Let's get rid of the material. So you can see that it's going to go from here, it's going to go down, it will go straight down into the wood, it'll make one pass going up, it'll come back, come to the vertical, and then back to the home position. Okay, now it's time to just go ahead and set the project up. So all I can do is just slide it right into position. No need to change anything. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down. I have the project clamped down. The bit is directly over my center point, And that is going to be my XY uh, zero position. And now I am ready to be able to carve. Now this only takes a few seconds to be able to carve. And what it happens, the bit goes straight down to the 0.28, and then with a few clearing passes to get the sawdust out, it comes right back 
to the same exact position. And here is what the keyhole slot looks like when it's completed. And the logo goes down to bottom and that shows you now the back of the project finished. Now to change these out, it's just a matter of loosening these two clamps. The clamps come off. The project comes out. The new project slides in. Clamps go back on. Just like that, I'm ready to carve again. So it just takes a matter of seconds. Now I want to take just a moment and show you all five of the logos finished. This was an interesting project and an awful lot of fun. And I had some good learning experiences along the way and I was glad I was being able to share this with you. The other thing that I wanted to point out, in this troubled time that we have in our world with the pandemic, I want to be able to give a special thanks to our military services around the world for what they do and to say, Thank you for your service. We really, really appreciate it. Hi everyone. Thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.